Can we say it again? Praise the Lord, saints. Amen, amen. I am so excited. I don't know if anyone saw me sitting over there, but I was leaning in, um, just so eager to be able to speak to you all this morning. I thank God for the opportunity to be with you all today because I understand you will be starting your fast. Praise God. How many people are actually excited about a fast? Some, right? Well, we're going to pray for everybody else. Um, when I was a little kid, we had to do fast. When I was very young, we'd have to fast for a day. Um, and we would be able to break the fast at night. And it was so hard. But I know that God is going to be with you all. So I just encourage you during that time. I'm also excited to be here because today is my 43rd birthday. And so, yes, um, it's a joy to be able to <laughs> celebrate another year, especially to celebrate with you all here in service. So, you know, the last time I was here, I spoke about us following the example of the Good Samaritan and being the pizza delivery guy. Was anybody here when I spoke over the summertime, a few people? Well, today I wanted to follow up in my talk about giving others what we deserve. That was the theme of my talk last time, you know, giving other people what we feel we deserve. And today I want to talk about being a cheerful giver versus a Grinch giver. And what do I mean? Don't be a Grinch. Don't be a Grinch giver. But before we jump in, let's pray and let's all bow our heads and turn our attention within. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you, God, for waking us up today and blessing us all to see another year. Thank you, God, for blessing me to celebrate my birthday today in the house of the Lord with your beautiful saints. Give me what you want me to say, God, to your people here and online. Use me, Lord, to be a vessel and to bless the people here what you want them to hear. Open up our hearts and minds on what you want us to receive. Lord, we pray for blessings and breakthroughs during this time of fast. And we thank you and we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So I want to center our conversation today in the word. And it's inspired by the scripture, 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 11, concerning spiritual gifts. And I know there might be some people here in service who might be new to the faith, and you might not be familiar with what spiritual gifts are. So we're going to talk a little bit about that in this new international version of the Bible. And you can either follow along in your Bible or you can read on the screen. And it says, now, about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, Somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus, be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone is the same God at work. Now, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To no one there is given through the Spirit a message, I'm sorry, to one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another miraculous powers. I don't know about you, but I want that one. I want some miraculous powers. To another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still another the interpretation of tongues. And finally, all these are the work of one of the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one of us just as he determines. Praise God. Amen. So Christmas was just a few weeks ago, and 
For many Christians, we celebrate the birth of Christ. Now, I know that we all love Jesus, especially here at Ashford, but I think we might know some folks, not here of course, who feel like Christmas is actually their birthday instead of his birthday, and they focus on getting gifts instead of giving gifts. Now, let me be clear, there's no shame in wanting a gift, amen? Christmas presents and birthday gifts are not just for kids. We all love surprises and the feeling we get when someone special does something special for, for us, right? So I actually had a video that I wanted to show, but I think it won't play, but I think there's a picture, at least, um, of this woman, a grandmother, um, getting a Christmas gift that was unexpected. And you, you all may have seen this. It was going around on TikTok and Instagram, but I'll describe what happens. So imagine, I want you all to imagine that the greatest gift you could ever receive, you don't know you're going to get it on Christmas Day, but that's what's happening right now. So I want you to take a moment and I want you to imagine that you are this grandmother or you're yourself, and you're about to unwrap whatever is in that Christmas gift. So I want us all to take about 10 seconds to think about and envision what that Christmas gift is. And it's in that gold package, and I'm gonna do a countdown. Are we ready to envision our greatest heart's desire? Are we ready? Okay, let's go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one. Open your eyes. Do you see it? Do you see your gift? Are you excited about it? I don't know about you, but I feel good just thinking about it. Do you all want to know what she got since we can't show the video? Are you curious to know what she got? Yep. She got a mink coat. And she had been wanting a mink coat for her whole life. And I don't know about you, but by a show of hands, how many of us want to receive that kind of surprise, too? Amen? I mean, it's my birthday, so I'm looking for all kinds of gifts and surprises. But I want to ask you something. As you think about, let's say, what your mink coat is, and what's the greatest gift you could ever receive, maybe it's a house, a trip, maybe for those folks who are single, it's a spouse, Maybe there's a family trying to conceive a child. Whatever it might be, I want you to really hold on to that and think about that. Now, what if a moment comes and that gift that just warms your heart and you finally got it and you've been waiting so long for it, what if a moment comes and you have to cheerfully give your greatest gift away? You have to cheerfully give your greatest gift away. And what if in order to go to the next level in your life, God is calling us to make such a sacrifice? So again, you're thinking about that greatest gift, the greatest desire of your heart. God's blessed you with it. You've been praying for it. Everybody just celebrated you. And then God says, you know what? I'm going to need that gift back. I'm going to need you to give it to that person over there. Now, don't front. I know some of y'all are like, nope, I'm sorry. I'm not giving away my gift. And I don't blame you, because I can relate. But sometimes we can covet something that we've been desiring for so long. And we can want gifts that belong to other people, right? We can turn material things and desires into idols. And I can be honest and say, at times in the past, I have to, right? And I think we all can say that there's been things that we've really wanted, that we almost worship them. A sister friend of mine talked about husband worship um, for women who are desiring a husband. So I know you're wondering, Ramona, why would you do such a cruel thing? Why would you invite us to envision getting our greatest gift only to give it back, only to give it away? Why would I do that? Because our gifts no matter how big or small, they don't belong to us. 
those desires and those things that we've been wanting and then God gives them to us or we earn them through hard work because we can't ignore the works along with faith, right? They belong to God. And we are often hoarding them for ourselves and for our benefit. But just as the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 12, 7, now to each one, the one is the gift, is the manifestation of the spirit, and it is given for what? The common good. Can you imagine our sister friend in the video, her beloved mink coat, she finally gets it, but God tells her, you see that woman on the street? She's cold. I need you to give her that coat. How many people think that she's going to give it up? I don't know her. And if you could see the video, this woman, she grabs the coat, she runs, she holds onto the coat like it's a brand new baby. And I won't lie, if I'm her, I wouldn't want to do it either. But if we really believe in God and we claim to be followers of Jesus, we have to be obedient and use every, and I make that in big, bold caps, every gift that he has blessed us with to be a blessing to others. You know, my stepbrother, Kendall, often says, so many times we pray to God for a blessing instead of praying to God to use us to be a blessing. Everyone, he says it like this, everybody want a blessing, but don't nobody want to be a blessing right? God invites us to live out the scripture, 2 Corinthians 9, 7, which says in the New International Version, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves what? A cheerful giver. And I talked about this the last time I was here, and you know, sometimes when you hear that, it's like, oh man, I don't want to be a cheerful giver, right? But notice the scripture says what you've decided in your heart. But the question for all of us here today to ask ourselves is, what influences our heart? What do I mean by that? Let me share an example. Many of you know from the last time I was here, here that I am a foodie and I love to eat. So I'm very happy about being back in Houston. Hence, my talk was, you know, be the pizza delivery guy. So I got to find a way to incorporate food into all my sermons, y'all. So have you ever had some really good food and somebody comes in or they know that you've got something really good to eat and they don't know how much you have? Let's say there's some peach cobbler. And you're like, oh, okay, I'll get you some. And you go in the kitchen and you're like, I'm just going to give them a little piece and I'm going to keep the rest for myself. I, I know I'm not the only one, okay? And you've decided to give it to them, but you're just going to give them a little bit because you felt in your heart, well, actually, you felt in your stomach, it was good just to share a little bit. And I know I have. Sometimes greed has our heart. And instead of being a cheerful giver, we become a Grinch giver. And for those who are unfamiliar with the Grinch, the Grinch tells the story of a cynical grump who goes on a mission to steal Christmas, only to have his heart changed by a young girl's generosity and her generous spirit. Some of us are green with envy. Some of us are green with greed. And I have a confession to make. At what point in my life I was that person? I was a Grinch giver. And what I'm about to tell you is one of the most shameful moments of my life. Because greed momentarily influenced my heart. About 12 years ago, I was in San Francisco on a business trip. And I was scheduled to have dinner with some friends around 6 o'clock at night. And one of my friends is Nigerian. And she was going to be making some ngusi soup with fufu. Yes, there are some Nigerians here, so you all know what I'm talking about. And let me tell you, igusi soup is one of my favorite meals with fufu. I had never tasted anything like it. I wanted to chew my fingers off, okay? You eat it with your fingers, it's good. I digress, okay? Back to the story. 
around four o'clock. Now remember, I'm supposed to eat at six o'clock. At four o'clock, I become so hungry because I had been in business meetings all day, I didn't get a chance to eat. And I was trying to hold out for two more hours, but I decided, you know what? Let me just get a snack. We've all done that before. So I walked to a store around the corner from my hotel, and I grabbed a tuna sandwich to eat in the car on my way to their house. Because, you know, Africans and African Americans, dinner might start supposedly at six o'clock, but we might not eat until eight o'clock. So, you know, I, I, I love my people, but I was like, I gotta feed my stomach just in case, right? So, I also get some quinoa salad. And for people who might not know what quinoa is, it's little grains, not very filling, right? And I was gonna have that for lunch the next day so I wouldn't be hungry again. So as I was walking back to my car, I could look ahead and I saw a homeless woman up ahead of me and I couldn't hear what she was saying, but she looked like she was pleading with people. I saw her reaching out and reaching out and looking. And I saw everybody pass her by as if she didn't exist. And you know who else passed her by? Me, without even a second thought. But as I passed her by, I could hear what she was saying, and it's like all of the street sounds. I don't know if you've been on a busy street, but in San Francisco, it's like New York. Busy street, I could, I could hear a pin drop. And all of a sudden, I heard what she was saying to everybody. I'm hungry! It was soul crushing. And so I stop and I turn around, and I look in my bag, and the Holy Spirit told me to give her my tuna sandwich. But I really wanted that tuna sandwich, y'all. I was hungry. So instead, what did I do? I gave her my quinoa salad. But I didn't have any utensils. And I'm reaching in the bag, getting ready to hand it to her, and she grabs it from me. She's so hungry, and she rips it open, and she just starts eating it with her hands. Why didn't I give her the sandwich? It would have been more filling, satisfying. She could have maintained her dignity so she didn't have to eat a quinoa salad with her hands. Why? Because I was greedy. And here I am, two hours away from going to get some good food with some good friends in a warm home, and I couldn't wait, and I couldn't sacrifice my coveted tuna sandwich. So I walk away in shame. I get in the car, but you know what I did? I pulled out that tuna sandwich, I took a bite, and it was the most bitter and worst tuna sandwich I've ever had. And I ended up discarding it, and as I was throwing it away, I started crying because here I am rejecting a tuna sandwich because of my taste buds. But yet I could have been of service to a woman who was, the way she said, I'm hungry was starving. I could have given. I could have been a cheerful giver, but I missed an opportunity to have a generous spirit. And it haunts me, right? And I share that testimony with you because I wanted to know, Lord, how do I get a generous heart? How do I get a, a heart in line with you, God? And how do I develop a generous spirit? And I believe one of the ways we do that is through seeking and asking God for spiritual gifts. And so, when was the last time you actually prayed for spiritual gifts? And I think there's a slide that has some spiritual gifts and all of these amazing things. When was the last time you prayed and said, Lord, use me to bless somebody else? The gifts that God has inside of you, imagine that you have an unwrapped, secret gift that you don't know exists but could be a superpower that could change the world. Wouldn't you want to know what that is? Yeah, yeah. So I encourage you, as you go on this fast, pray and ask God to reveal your spiritual gifts. And I think we rarely seek God for spiritual gifts, and it makes sense because we have a lot of earthly desires and needs that are immediate and distract us. You know, another thing that clouds our ability to have the right heart and to share our gifts are societal expectations, right? How many of us are on Instagram? A lot of us, right? And it's so easy 
to see memes like this. You'll see one that says, in six months, you will be sitting in a new car outside a new home, admiring your six-figure bank account. Claim it, right? And those prosperity ministers, God wants you to be blessed. Yes, we often pray for material things and God does want to bless us. But as you reap the blessings of the Lord, I invite you to consider giving somebody a ride in that new car. You have a home that God just blessed you with. Maybe there's somebody who's housing insecure who could use a place to stay. My family was homeless and we lived in a church when I was a little kid. The church opened up its doors, but a family opened up their doors to us too. People gave us money, gave us rides. Now let me just put a caveat on this. Be Holy Spirit led on who you invite into your home as well. Because I don't want y'all calling me and saying, Ramona told me to invite this crazy person into my house, right? So again, when was the last time we prayed for such a thing? And Jesus, think about God. God gave a gift. He gave us his only begotten son, right? And then Jesus gave his life for us cheerfully, voluntarily. But God is not the only one who's given up a child. Can you imagine not being able to conceive and wanting a baby? And you say, Lord, if you just give me a baby, I will give that child back to you to serve you. And you give that child once it's born voluntarily to the Lord. There's a woman named Hannah in the Bible who did that. And our gifts are not unto ourselves. And when we're obedient and we make sacrifices and we give up that thing that we really want, God often makes a way for those gifts to be returned in an even greater way. Did you know that even though Hannah gave up her son Samuel, who actually was um, a priest who led God's people, God blessed Hannah with five more children. She couldn't conceive before. She finally has Samuel. She gives him up but God blesses her. Now, did Hannah know that if she made that sacrifice, God would come through for her? I don't think so. But she had faith, and she did it cheerfully. As I begin to close, some of us might be familiar with the scripture, John 14, 12. But the New International Version says, very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me, believes in God, will do works I have been doing, and they will do even greater works than these because I'm going to the Father, and I meant Jesus. So this is Jesus talking. He said, very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me, so do we believe in Jesus? Amen. Then you will do the works that I've been doing and even greater things. And even though God's no longer here, and he will be coming back, he's calling each and every one of us to do work, greater works. Essentially, Jesus said, yo, I'm out, but y'all got this. Yeah. Can you imagine Jesus bestowing in you and you and you his work to do, picking up the mantle? So I have a question for you, Ashford family. When are we gonna do those greater works? When are we going to do those greater works? If God gave us a superpower as a gift, why wouldn't we use that to do what Jesus did, to address and serve all the needs of his people and share those gifts that he blessed us with? Why? Because they don't belong to us. We've got to bless somebody else, right? We've got to do all that we can to be cheerful gift givers and pay his blessings forward. And this last slide that I want to bring up, uh, I don't know about you, but I don't, know, I, I don't know about you, and I don't know what you're going to pray for when you fast. But I'm praying to manifest some spiritual gifts in 2022, along with some of the gifts highlighted on the social media memes. So you'll see the first thing is what? Money, wealth, right? Happiness. Freedom, success, transformation, adventure, travel, healing. I pray that you all have those things. But you know what I'm calling in? I'm calling in wisdom. I'm manifesting knowledge, faith. 
I want those miraculous powers. I'm manifesting prophecy, discernment, speaking in tongues, boldness, eyes to hear, hands to serve, and opportunities to give. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for your word. As this congregation prepares, prepares, Father, to go on a fast, we ask that you sustain them, Lord, and pour out special blessings, a double blessing, that includes healing, health, wellness, and resources, and gifts that reflect the desires of their hearts. Reveal their spiritual gifts, God. Let them seek out those spiritual gifts so that they can use them to be of service and create opportunities and provide resources for each other, not just here at Ashford Community Church, but within Kingdom City and within the city of Houston, Father God, and beyond. We thank you for using this mighty group of people, this Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit-led group of people to transform the world with their spiritual gifts. And we thank you and praise you for all these things. In Jesus' name, we say, amen. God bless you all, and Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor.